Hey folks, welcome to another review with yours truly, Sam Healy, right here on the Dice Tower. Today we're going to be taking a look at Mistwind. It is a pickup and deliver game in which your transports are flying whales, which are fueled by krill, which are basically what you would expect to find if a shrimp and a hornet had a baby. So this is a two-player setup for the game, and the game can actually play from one to five players, so you can take that for what it's worth. Uh, generally speaking, with a two-player game, you're going to have a couple of AI stacks of uh, action discs that you're going to have to use uh, during the game. In three or four players, there are no AI, but with one and two, there are, and then with five, there's no AI either, but there are some special rules for five players, too. Generally speaking, the game is going to play over four or five rounds, depending on how many players you have. There is, first of all, a new round preparation, which is basically where each player is going to take their action discs that are numbered one to five, and you're going to choose one of them that you're not going to be able to use over the course of that round. And all of those are placed right here on this compass. Then, in the uh, player turn phase, uh, players in turn order, starting with the person with the uh, ship's wheel, uh, they're going to go first, and then in clockwise order, everybody's going to take turns placing one of their action tokens in one of the four areas that are on the board, and then after that, that's a mandatory action, but after that, they have exactly two uh, actions that they can do that are not mandatory, you're optional, and that is moving your transports around, and then if your transports are in some of these areas, they can pick up cargo, and then if they end their movement in some of these spots right here, they can drop off cargo right there. Uh, then after that, you have the ability to claim rewards, and rewards are different places like these achievement cards down here. Uh, some of the network cards are considered uh, rewards as well, but we'll go over that in a little bit more detail in just a few moments. After that, you'll have an end of round phase where uh, each of the different port cards in numerical order one to five are um, uh, resolved and then some cleanup in the board happens all of these cards uh, these character cards if any are left over they are removed and five new ones come out and then the five port cards are removed and five new ones come out and then you get ready for another uh, new round preparation where you um, uh, are going to take your player discs, discard one of them, and get ready for the next round. So that's the general idea of how everything works together. Once you get to the fourth round in a one to four player game or a fifth round in the fifth player game, everybody adds up their points uh, and whoever has the most points is the winner. So generally speaking, the resources board is exactly what it would sound like. You put your chip there and then you'll be able to gain these resources and you're good to go. That's all you can basically do. Up here on the character cards, there's a couple of things. Up at the top of the card is a number of coins that you have to spend whenever you go to that spot to purchase that card. Additionally, there are exactly four different kinds of cards up here. You have uh, this U-turn symbol here, which basically means that this is a one-time uh, thing that you can use. When you purchase it, you put it into your tableau, and then uh, from that point on, any time during your turn that you want to use this card, you can. And the ability here simply means that you can move one of your ports to another space on the map. This little infinity symbol here means that this is an ongoing ability that as soon as you purchase it, it becomes active and will always help you out later on in the game. And so what this means is that whenever you go to the resources board over here, you're able to get an extra resource of your choice. Over here, the exclamation marks mean that it is an immediate effect that happens immediately after you purchase the card. And then these two cards here 
have a star symbol on them. And what that simply means is that the owner of these cards will get some extra end of game scoring abilities uh, at the end of the game if they have these in their tableau. So you pay two bucks and you take that card, you put it in your tableau. At the end of the game, you're going to be able to score two points for every port and or transport that's on one of these kinds of spaces on the board. This one over here does basically the same thing, but it's for a different kind of resource. Two points for every uh, mushroom space where you have a port and or transport at the end of the game. Over here, the labor board basically gives you some actions that are a little bit better uh, than uh, going to a different place of the board. So number one here basically allows you to draw two character cards. You get to keep one for free and then you have to give one to somebody else and they'll be able to keep it for free. The two spot here allows you to build uh, ports or transports uh, using just money. Normally you have to use steel or and wood to purchase uh, to build those things but this spot allows you to use coins instead and you can do it twice. So you could do two ports for six or two transports for ten or you could do one of each for eight but that's what this one does here. The third spot allows you to uh, make a movement for free of up to three spaces with one of your transports. And any time during that move, you can drop off or pick up um, uh, goods uh, wherever you'd like. Number four over here, first of all, gives you the first player token, which is important because, hey, it allows you to go first, but it also, at the end of the game, is going to give you two points, so that's a cool thing. It's also going to give you two krill, which you need to spend, and more often than not, when you are moving your transports, but we'll talk that about talk about that later. And then you also get uh, to perform a trade uh, uh, as many times as you want, one for one for uh, steel, lumber, and coins, however many you'd like to make. And then the fifth place down here, you pay one coin and then you're able to take the effect at the bottom of these port cards, uh, uh, but just one of them. Each of these regions that we've already talked to, you can only place one of your action tokens out on. Once you've placed one of your action tokens there, you cannot place it anywhere else. But down in the port area here, you are able to put any number of uh, tokens down there. But this is where timing is important because the last person to go to each of these spaces is able to get a free bonus or reward uh, for being the last person to visit that port card. Now, when you immediately go, or when you go there, you do get an effect, and everybody that goes there will get this top effect, but only the last person to go to these places will be able to get the bottom reward. Now, movement is uh, something that is a little bit uh, unintuitive, but it's not that difficult to understand. So basically, if you're moving your transport, which is your first optional thing that you can do after playing one of your action discs, you uh, to move from one space to the next, it costs one krill if the place that you're moving from does not have one of your other transports or one of your ports. So in this situation, if I want to move this transport from here to here, it would cost me one krill down on your player board. But let's say that this was the situation that I'm trying to move in. I have a port in this area here, so moving from here would be free. And then I have another transport here, so moving here to here would also be free. But if I wanted to move to another space, which I know, you could go from here to here, no worries. But if I wanted to move another space and I don't have anything here, I would have to pay one krill to go there. When you're performing a move, you can move all of your transports as long as you can afford to do so with the krill that you may or may not need to pay. For example, if I wanted to, I can move this guy here for free. And then now, since I have two transports here, I can continue to move this guy down here, or if I wanted to, I can move this person down here. It doesn't matter. Once you've completed your movement, you can then load or unload uh, cargo onto your ship. If you're on a space like this that has the ability to produce cargo, you will simply take uh, that color uh, cube and put it onto your transport just like that. Then down here, I could do the same thing, just with a different color cube. We use the white cubes for paper, and that is the end of my movement phase and unload or load phase. But if you end your movement in a spot where you can unload, 
you can unload your cargo and get some uh, bonuses. So if I unload this mushroom right here, I'll be able to take this demand token, which is going to be worth one point at the end of the game for me. And if there is a bonus on the row that I'm fulfilling, then I also get to choose which bonus I want to take. I could either take, for example, right here, I could take two coins or one lumber. If I was fulfilling medicine like this one right here, I would only be able to get one coin. I wouldn't really have a choice. But this will come to my tableau. And of course, I've removed the uh, good from the back of uh, the transport. And then I'd also be able to remove this paper here and take this token right here, which is worth one point at the end of the game for me, but it doesn't have any bonuses out here. So that is that. Once I do sell, uh, these are going to scoot down like that. And then another one will come out uh, in its place like this. And then right here, these don't actually move down anything because I took the last one, uh, but another uh, good tile would come out here as well. And that happens immediately after you do the uh, transaction. After you have finished your movement, you can load or unload. And then after you load or unload, you can also claim any rewards that you may have completed during the course of the game. So you first of all have these uh, network cards. And once you've connected the three points that are delineated by the card, uh, if it happens during the course of one of your turns, you can turn it over and you'll be able to score those points immediately uh, during the course of the game. If by the end of the game, you weren't able to completely get it done, but you got at least one of those connections done, you can uh, score the fewer points at the end of the game. You can also claim network tokens, which are uh, these things right here. So each of the capital cities want to be connected to a certain uh, other place on the board. So this purple capital city here wants to be connected to the gray uh, flag over here. So if you can use your transports and or um, ports to connect those two areas with a single continuous line, then you'll be able to take one of your uh, markers here and place it right on that spot. The first person gets to take the most points and then everybody else in the game will be able to take uh, the other ones below it. You also have achievement tokens that are down here. And basically these are races. The first person to uh, reach each of these achievements gets to take that token. And those tokens will be worth that many points at the end of the game. After you have uh, completed that claim reward section, that will be the end of your turn. And it moves on to the next person. Once everybody has gone through each of those four phases on their turn, uh, playing an action disc, moving a transport, and loading or unloading cargo, and then claiming rewards, uh, then you will go to an end of round phase where you will basically clean up the board, uh, make sure that uh, anybody who can claim a reward is able to do that going through the uh, uh, port rewards as well. And then you'll go through another round preparation and that continues until, like I said, you go through four or five phase uh, rounds. Whoever has the most points at the end of the game is the winner. So my first pro of the game is the action selection mechanism. And these action discs are a really cool thing. I, I like how, uh, how much tension it brings to the game uh, because not only do you have only five discs to use, um, you have to get rid of one of them at the beginning of the round. So you actually only have four to choose from and then um, you can only place one of them in three of the four regions. Granted, the last region is able, you can, you can place multiple things down there, but there's a timing aspect to that region. So you can't just like willy nilly, well, I, I can't go there. I got to go somewhere else now. Man, that's really difficult because each of these spots in these four different regions are specific. Only one person can choose them. And then on top of that, if you already have one there, you can't go back over there. 
So these three regions are really tight, and I really like it. I really enjoyed that aspect of the game. But on top of that, I really also enjoyed the fact that the last region, the port cards down there, you can actually put multiple tokens down there because it, it kind of allows you to save some face. If somebody goes to uh, multiple places where you wanted to go or where you were planning on going, you can kind of save a little bit of face and do something else that's cool and possibly uh, get a really cool free ability as well. I really enjoyed this uh, action selection. I just thought it brought uh, a lot of tension, healthy tension to the game. And it also puts out that idea that you, uh, you really need to come up with a plan B. Uh, maybe even a plan C and a plan D as well. My second pro were the character cards. The character cards were uh, something that kind of gave a low-key uh, variable player power feel to the game because each of these different character cards are going to allow you to do something uh, a little bit different than everybody else is able to do them. Uh, it's going to give you some additional scoring possibilities at the end of the game. It's going to give you some really cool immediate effects that you'll be able to hopefully capitalize on and uh, really grow from. I really enjoy the character cards a lot. The artwork on them is really good as well. So uh, there's just a lot of really cool abilities that are uh, thrown into the character cards. And I like that little uh, breath of uh, individuality that breathes into the game uh, for each of the different players there. So the character cards were a definite pro for me. A third pro was the component quality. Now, I, there is one aspect of the component quality that we'll talk about in the cons, but generally speaking, overall, the component quality for this game is top notch. I really enjoyed a lot of the uh, different things that they did. Some of the really small uh, little part, like putting a gold foil rim around these cards and around the uh, port cards as well. Just little things like that really uh, are the details that uh, really make this great. On top of that, more uh, the the more on the face type uh, component quality. These transports are great. The miniatures that they use for the ports are really interesting looking. Great design, uh, great detail in all of this. All of the different uh, cardboard components are very thick and durable. Even these in the retail version, now I will say there is a difference between the retail version and the Kickstarter version. Um, and the Kickstarter version just kind of takes everything and ratches it up a little bit. Uh, well, not everything but a, a few things and ratchets it up a little bit. But um, even these little poker chips, which in the retail version aren't as nice as the Kickstarter version, they're still really good. Um, so everything is done here in a very good quality manner, and I think that needs to be said. Great component quality. My fourth pro were the port cards, and these were probably one of the more intriguing things about the game for me because, I, first of all, we already talked about how I liked how you could place multiple discs down there as kind of a way to save face from missing some of the things you were wanting to do in the other three regions. That's all well and good. That's part of the action selection, though. The port cards themselves, I really enjoyed that, I, that idea that when you go there, you get to do something. Uh, but the timing aspect of when you go there is when you're trying to get that free, really awesome ability at the end of the round. And I liked the extra tension that it added to that accent selection of timing. And timing is very important. Another pro for the game for me was the fact that the action boards uh, are also double-sided, so uh, they have a A side and a B side. And the B side basically just ratchets up the interaction of the game a little bit more because you're not just like, for example, for the resources board, uh, you're going to be uh, just getting these resources on the A side. On the B side, however, you're going to be getting those resources as you would normally, but you also have to ask people how they're going to ask. So for example, in the fifth spot here, you're going to be able to choose five different resources, whatever you want to do. But you have to ask one of your neighbors what good or resource you cannot take. And so the interactivity of this side of the board is a really cool thing. And the same thing happens over on the labor board as well. You have basically a, a general idea of what each of these do. On this side, 
same basic idea, but you have to ask your neighbors uh, certain questions and they have to, uh, they will provide some restrictions for you. I really think that's a great thing. I love the fact that those action boards are um, double sided so that you can kind of throw a wrench into the system, if I want to call it that. Maybe not a wrench, but just a little bit of a curveball after you're uh, savvy on the game. I really did enjoy that. And then finally, I'll say my last pro for the game is the solo mode. And I'll say that the solo mode is an incredibly instructional and useful way to learn how to play the game and to familiarize yourself enough with the game so that you can teach it to other people in a, in, in a rather seamless manner. Uh, the solo mode is very, very useful as a tutorial, and I had to mention that in the pros. Now, unfortunately, I did have some cons for the game as well, uh, and uh, there's basically uh, three of them. Uh, the first one is, is that I, I feel like the player counts are a bit off for the game. And what I mean by that is that um, with one and two players, it works. With, with the solo mode, it's very, as I just got through saying, it's very instructional. It's a great tutorial to teach yourself how to play the game. I just didn't find it very fun. Because in a, in a single player game, you have four stacks of these tokens that you're manipulating every single round. And that means at the end of the round, you have to basically collect five uh, stacks worth of player tokens, shuffle the four in their own respective stacks. And that just took a lot of time and it sapped some of the fun out of the game for me. I just didn't really enjoy it. Two player is not bad, but even with two player, you're each going to be uh, uh, using a stack of this, so it didn't really work well. With three and four players, I think that's where the song, that's where the game really sings as far as a player count, because you are uh, getting your four actions and you don't have to use any AI in the game. So I really enjoy three and four players. With five players, though, ah. Man, I don't think I'll ever play this game five player again. I'm not, I'm not saying that I won't. I know I won't ever encourage it because, man, it only, it basically just adds another 45 minutes to the game. And it, out, it also takes away the number of things that you can do in a round because you're in a five player game, you're discarding two of your action tokens, not just one. Uh, over the course of the game, you're still doing the same um, amount of, of actions, but it just doesn't play very well. It just doesn't play very well at five, unfortunately. Three and four, absolutely love those player counts. But with five, uh, actually I would even say two, three, and four. I love those player counts. With one, it's great for teaching you, but it's not very fun. With five, downtime reigns and it just becomes a little bit of a slog. My second con of the game, I've already alluded to it, but it is the fact that downtime is considerable, uh, especially since you really can't plan for your turn until the person before you has all but completed their turn uh, because you can't plan on uh, what goods you're going to drop off until um, that person has done all of that stuff. You can't really plan uh, where you're going to go until they've chosen where they're going to go. Uh, you definitely have the idea of where you want to go. That's what the, the, the entire new round preparation phase is all about. But you can't really plan what you're going to do until the other person finishes their turn. And that just translates to a lot of downtime. And that downtime is really amped up in a five-player game, which is why I don't really enjoy uh, a five-player experience that much. Now, my third uh, con is actually has to do with one of the components, and that is the fact that these lids do not, <laughs> and I'm going to do this, but I'll just have to, uh, maybe it'll come off. See how it just, it just doesn't grip. It just doesn't grip the bottom of the, now that's clicked in. That's the way it's supposed to be, but if I try to pick that up, it just does not hold and that is a mess waiting to happen. Uh, so that is that the insert for the game, the little trays that the components set in, the components themselves, they're all super great and it's amazing. It's, I really enjoy putting this game away because it's very satisfying, but this one part of that thing just not sticking, 
That's unfortunately, I had to say something about it. Now, with all of that being said, my rating for the game is actually going to be pretty high. <sighs> because I really did enjoy this game. I know I provided a lot of caveats for my enjoyment, but I really enjoyed it. I'm going to give this an 8 out of 10. And I usually don't give it such high when I have three cons like that, but in retrospect, this little thing, that's a small thing. The other two, they're kind of bigger, but it's more of a thing where I don't want to play with certain uh, number counts. And because with those number counts, the downtime is considerably high. Otherwise, it plays pretty well. And I actually really enjoy this game a lot. They did some really fun things in this game, and I have a great time playing it. The it looks good on the table. It pops. It's got great artwork on the box. There's a lot of really positive things going on here. You'll just have to take those cons that I mentioned and weigh them against uh, how much you're going to enjoy the game. But for me, it's an 8 out of 10. Thanks for joining me. I certainly appreciate you. We'll see you guys and gals on the flip side. Take care.